Who we're gonna start? I am recording this. This will be posted up on our website. Uh, I'm excited about this interview because I met with Dan earlier this summer, and we just talked about the wonderful opportunities that students can take advantage of at KNTU, and just everything that he's doing to build skills, to prepare students, and even just offer opportunities for students. So I was like, let's bring him in for a conversation on, you know, what opportunities you have maybe now and for the future, uh, what career advice you have, and uh, just some, maybe some additional questions about Dan and who he is and why he got into this field. So that'll kind of be our, our framework uh, of questions that we'll work from. So without further ado, I'll allow Dan to introduce himself and just tell us just your journey of how you, uh, your background, what you did and how you ended up becoming the program director of KNTU. All right, well, thank you, Eric. It's good to be here. I'm the general manager of KNTU Radio, which is owned and operated by the University of North Texas. Uh, it's part of the media arts department, but we have students from all different colleges that come here to either volunteer or uh, work as a staff director or help out with um, news and sports. Um, we also have board operator positions as well. So lots of different things to do for students at KNTU. Um, there are three staff members that run the station that are non-students. Uh, there is Randy Smith, who's our chief engineer. He handles all the technical uh, problems that uh, come about and keeps us on the air and keeps uh, helps with keeping us legal as well, because we are uh, licensed by the Federal Communications Commission uh, as we are, uh, we have a terrestrial signal at 88.1. Terrestrial means over the land. So the signal transmits uh, about 50, 60 miles in all directions, roughly. Sometimes we'll get out 70, 80 miles, it kind of depends, but we definitely cover the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Uh, with our signal 88.1. We also stream on the internet. Uh, so there's also Mark Lambert, who is uh, the program and news and operations manager. He's been here about 21 years. And uh, he will uh, handle a lot of the music and programming aspects of KNTU. Uh, and then uh, as general manager, I do have a few things that I handle specifically. Some of those include sports, also the underwriting, which is a fancy term for advertising, but it's not technically advertising since we're non-commercial. We can't air commercials, but we can air underwriting announcements. There is a little bit of a difference between your average commercial, which is more of a call to action, and an underwriting announcement, which gives information. But a lot of people think they sound an awful lot alike, and they do. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So we can go out and sell a 30 second announcement or a 15 second announcement. Um, and we can run that during regular programming and uh, we can also run it during sports. So those are some of the areas that I handle. All right, cool. So, I mean, just to give us a little bit of your background, how background. did, what did you do before? So I, uh, I, let me just, we'll, we'll start how I got going. I actually started in high school. I was 16 years old and lived in a small town in Michigan. And there was a small town radio station that uh, uh, aired some features that were done by high school students. And I was taking a class called radio and TV in high school. Um, the high school teacher happened to work at not only full time as a teacher, but he had a part time job on weekends at the local TV station. So he was plugged into that world. And I was kind of, you know, excited about, wow, this is kind of cool. I'm in high school. I can take these classes. So uh, that led to me getting a job at the local radio station. I was part time making minimum wage, but it was still either that or McDonald's. So I, uh, I, I opted to do that and had a lot of fun. That led to me going to college. I went to Central Michigan University. I kind of started out more as a DJ on air personality. I did that for many years, decades. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, college was, I got to say, it was, and this is something that inspired me to want to do what I do today. When I was a student in college, I absolutely loved working at the campus radio stations. And one big thing I want to say right now is people think, well, you know, I don't know if I want to work at KMTU because I don't want to work at a radio station. 
And that is not smart. Don't ever catch yourself saying that. And here's why. Because you will learn skills that you might use doing 25 other different jobs that have nothing to do with radio or very little to do with radio. Um, I'll give you one example. Uh, there might be somebody that wants to pursue a career in marketing or advertising, and they might work for an ad agency, but they would learn some of those skills, not only in a classroom, but they would learn more about that here. I have uh, one student whose name is Chris. He comes from the College of Business. He's a marketing major, and he is one of our eight student staff directors, and he helps me sell underwriting announcements. And he's learned a lot about how... Uh, the process of the sale and how commercials are bought and sold. Uh, even though we're non-commercial, it's it's not a far cry difference. So there's a ton of things that you can learn here at KNTU. Another example is sports. Uh, there are guys that come here, they learn board op, they go get a job in Dallas Fort Worth as a board op. Next thing you know, they're, they've become a producer. There are guys that started at the ticket in Dallas that are a talk show host now, and they started as a board op. Um, there are guys that go work for TV as a TV play-by-play -play announcer that started in radio. Mm -hmm. um, there are jobs in uh, 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 just all different aspects. So, yeah. so writing is another one, a news writer. Yeah. And we have journalism students that really want to write, but there is a different skill set between writing news for print mm -hmm. or we'll, we'll call it a column that might be published online that skill is a little different than writing news for radio and writing it for TV or we call broadcast. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. And that's, that's part of the reason why I wanted to just highlight, you know, what uh, KNTU are doing for students because it ain't just like, oh, I'm single focused on one position and one skill, but you're exposed to a plethora of skills that will help you to be even more competitive in the market. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's I'm glad that you kind of explain, you know, just the benefit of KTU uh -huh. and and not <laughs> saying yep. that crazy idea like, oh, I don't want to work at KTU or I don't want to be uh, a DJ. Might need to consider well, working. That's it. fine. You know? <laughs> and, and actually, in the world of DJs or or yeah. as we call it, which is an acronym for disc jockey, which mm -hmm. generally speaking, they're not called these days. A lot of yeah. them are referred to as talent. It's probably the more common name or air personality that goes back a few decades. But yeah. um, these are people that, of course, you hear on the air and they might be playing music or they might have their own show. Uh, but th that is not what radio is all about. Um, it, yeah. I look at radio as is uh, a brand that yeah. is used to market and promote various things such as either commercials or promotions. We have public service announcements. There, it's a way of getting the word out. I mean, we're a source yeah. that people go to when there's a tornado warning. A lot of yeah. people, well, I'm, I'm in the car, I'm going to turn on the radio, see what's going on. Yeah. Um, so th there's a lot that radio brings to the table, and there's a lot of skills you can get from working here. One more thing I want to mention, this dovetails to the background part of my discussion. I mentioned that I started out on air. Uh, specifically, actually, I started out doing news for the small town station. I was one of the guys that would go rip prepare. Uh, when I say rip, it's it's old fashioned for the wire would come over a, a machine on paper. Yeah. Today it's on computer, but it used <laughs> to be on this uh, paper and you would rip it and uh, you would take that to uh, put together your own newscast. So yeah. that's what I started out doing. Oh man, I don't need to guess your age, man. You're gonna have to guess my <laughs> age. <laughs> it goes back. So so after, after doing that, I, I became a DJ and then I went to college. And yeah. in college I worked at, there were three different radio stations at the university I went to. One was very much like Kane's U, was owned by the university. Mm -hmm. um, it had low wattage. Ours is 100,000 watts. So the campus station I worked at had 100 watts versus 100,000. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it just covered a few miles around the campus. Yeah. Um, and I also worked at what was called a carrier current station, which is it was transmitted through the electricity in the dorms. Um, and this was tremendous experience. Had a lot of fun, met a lot of people. 
Um, many jobs that I got later in life came from relationships that I had mm -hmm. through the university. So I, I can't stress how important it is to get connected and network with yeah. people. Um, and I will tell you on the note of one more thing, on the note of what you think you want to do in college and what you're going to do later, I can tell you if you would have gone back to when I was a freshman at Central Michigan University and, and you would have asked me, do you think one day you'll be a school teacher? I would have said, you're crazy. <laughs> what? I used yeah. to for Frisco ISD. I was a yeah. full-time teacher for a while in the public schools. Um, would have never thought I would have done that. So, you know, just goes to say that there, there are things that you think you want to do when you're 19, 20, 21, 22 years old. And when you're 35, that could change. And when yeah. you're 50, it most certainly will at some point. Yeah. Um, yeah. One, one other thing, too, I want to toss out just as on this whole note of uh, preparing yourself and, and uh, education. Um, the classes are great. UNT has a tremendous, tremendous faculty members. Uh, there are different departments where you can you can go to journalism, you go to media arts. Like I said, I have students that work here that go to the college, college of Business. There's great things you can work, learn in a classroom, but it always helps to go refine these skills. Uh, yeah, you can, for example, let's say you want to edit audio, produce or edit audio, just as you would you know produce and edit video for a, a TV series. Well, working with audio, you could do that in a class. Yes, you could, but at k and it's part of the job. So you get really good at it. And so it's called refining a skill. You learn about it in the classroom. You refine it here at k and um, So I just wanted to mention that as something I think is important. No, that is so good. So if students are interested in working at k and and they don't have a lot of experience, like what would you advise students to do to be you know, noticed or to stand out if the opportunity presents itself there. Okay, so what I might do before I answer that question is explain what some of the different jobs are here. Mm -hmm. We have eight student staff director positions. Uh, we have a production director, a program director, a music director, a news and a sports director, a public affairs director, and uh, I mentioned the, the uh, underwriter. We also have a position that is promotions and social media. So they handle the uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram posts uh, for our social media, as well as our website, too. We, we have one of those old fashioned things called a website. <laughs> um, these students work anywhere from 10 to 20 hours per week. Uh, some of them are set up to be very structured at 20 hours a week, but there's others that are 10, depending on their class load. Um, and uh, they get paid. They're employees of the university. Um, in addition to those eight staff director positions, oh, by the way, those come open. They're filled by students and only students at UNT, nobody else. Um, but a lot of times a student either wants to try something else or they graduate and it reopens the position. So I would say... Uh, the best time to start searching for those positions is in the spring. And in April and May, we start interviewing for the following year. Okay. So I would recommend put a little note on your on your phone to uh, uh, check uh, Handshake and and or just reach out to KNT and say, hey, what do you got coming up? Those are for those paid positions. Now, we also have volunteer positions in news and sports and DJ, and we have uh, opportunity as well for board ops, which are paid. Um, those are most common during the sports season. Like right now, we have students that run the board during a UNT women's or a men's basketball game. Mm, and we okay. hold the football team. All right. Why is, you said volunteer positions. Why is volunteering so important? Well, we can't pay every single position. Some of it has to do with the way we're budgeted and it is a university budget. Um, but also it's nice for students to be able to sign up and work just a few hours in a week. Let's say they can't commit to 20 or even to 10 hours, but they can work and do a three hour shift on a Thursday afternoon, just doing a sports cast. We have some students that do that. So uh, what I would tell you is sometimes it fits a student's schedule better to be a volunteer. Um, it is a commitment, so you can't just come and go as you please. In other words, um, I, I always use this analogy. Many years ago when I was living in Houston, 
I volunteered as a, uh, a DAT captain with the American Red Cross. And I would go out, uh, sometimes there would be a fire or some emergency that would take place, could be a flood. And uh, I would be one of the people who go out and help people who maybe have lost everything. Well, that position I wasn't paid for. I was a volunteer, but I'll tell you what, if someone's house just burned down and I was supposed to go out with the Red Cross to, to help on that call, and I just decided I didn't feel like working that day, how do you think they would have liked that, those people that I was serving? So volunteer, and I don't care where you're volunteering, it's a commitment. People expect you to do yeah. those things. So yeah. it came to you, if you can commit to working a three hour or six hours a week, and you want to come by and do a shift or two, we'd love to have you do that. Uh, yeah. But we also encourage you to apply for the paid positions. Yeah. And, I, and I, just to add to the volunteer, uh, taking a chance on volunteering somewhere, uh, I know I had a situation where I volunteered and uh, I was doing like uh, groups for actually a volunteer organization on campus at UTD. And I, I just was like, hey, I, I just want to do groups because uh, they were looking for a facilitator. So, mm -hmm. so I'll do groups and I, I volunteer my time. And, and then that ended up translating over to a, a teaching opportunity. So mm -hmm. even with volunteering, you have teaching opportunities. It's like a interview before the interview. Yeah, like you can see some of your work, your work ethic, and then one of those positions come available. We got, you know, Sonia in this position. She's perfect. We can just go ahead and slide her into the sports director, or we can go ahead and, uh, you know, interview her for this position because we already know her work ethic. So yeah. it's like you already can display, yep. you know, what you can contribute and add value to while developing skills and add it to your resume. So it's so many elements. I know uh, a lot of times students want to get paid, but if there's a volunteer opportunity where you can build your resume, I'll take advantage of it. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, I can tell you. So yeah. true. There are so many instances where people uh, volunteer to learn a skill. And like you say, once they're in there, people mm -hmm. get to know you. It's not just learning the work, the duties that you'll do, but it's them getting to know you as a person. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of times when a paid job comes open, and I'm talking not at the in the university right. arena, yes, that happens here too, but but outside in the real world where you're mm -hmm. out trying to find a job, um, you get to know these people and they know you. And when a job comes open, they go, hey, let's ask so-and-so. They're a right. good person. They're a hard worker. And that turns into a good paying job sometimes. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And I, uh, so you kind of talked about like some technical skills and even touched on soft skills. Like what are some of those soft skills that students develop at KNTU? Um, well, That's important for the industry. On, there's a lot of different skill sets and I'm going to cover several of them uh, mm -hmm. just to answer your question. But it really depends on what they want to go into and what the position is. Now, for example, one would be being on the air as a broadcaster. Mm -hmm. Not everybody that works at a radio station, mm -hmm. most people who work at a radio station are not on air. There's just the select few that are actually the ones doing the announcing. So a ton of jobs in the business <clears throat> or related businesses that have to do with, um, you know, off air skills. Now, uh, so, well, let's use the on air one first. So learning announcing, there's a. You can take, uh, in fact, I took a, a class in college, which was called voice and diction. It was how to develop a good speaking voice. Now that can serve you well as, as a public speaker, right? As, mm -hmm. In addition to being somebody who mm -hmm. is, is announcing on the radio. Could be news, it could be DJ, could be sports. So that's one skill level. Another really big one is writing, uh, learning to write well. I touched on earlier, You there's a, there's a you know, they teach uh, in journalism, they teach uh, what is a, a good skill, the a good writing ability for writing a column or maybe something that you would read. We used to say in a newspaper, I guess, yeah. online newspaper today, you yeah. might say <laughs> that style of writing is very different from broadcast. So yeah. broadcast is very um, uh, succinct, concise. Um uh, short and sweet, get to the who, what, when, where, why, um, uh, uh, cover it and, and get out. I mean, today, the, as you know, humans' attention spans are very short, so you don't have time to get into a lot of detail when you're doing a broadcast story. Mm. Uh, otherwise, they'll tune out, so that's yeah. why 
That's why that in radio and TV today, you'll find things are very shortened. So writing is a critical skill and uh, being able to edit uh, what you write is, is very important too. Uh, another skill is producing, how to produce a commercial or a PSA, the production, audio production part. And by the way, those are skills that you learn in radio and then later you might use those same skills in TV. Now you're gonna add the video component of it, but let's face it, when you're editing video, um, there's things you learn that are very similar to editing audio. Right, right. You know, making sure right. the, the transitions are tight yeah. and that uh, it looks good and that it, it uh, you know, people can't tell when there's an edit, for example. Right. I, love, I love something that you said uh, uh, before. You was like, you get to refine skills. Like it's so many skills that you learn in the classroom, but when you apply it to, uh, you know, working in an actual environment, you tend you get to refine those skills and be better, so you can be better prepared for the workforce. So I, I really love that. You know, you highlight those skills, but I wanted to emphasize mm -hmm. that point that you made about refining those skills. And KNTU is a wonderful opportunity yeah, to do one that. Part. One thing I want to add on to that, Eric, it's, it's yeah. like that in a lot of aspects of life. I'll use another analogy. Yeah. Another analogy to that is sports. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's face it, uh, you know, uh, you can play golf. Anybody can pick up a golf club and sw swing it. If you swing enough times, you're going to hit the ball, right? Right, right. What makes your golf game better is consistency. Any mm -hmm. golfer will tell you that. Any A good quarterback would tell you, yeah, I can throw the ball. But, yeah. you know, you want to be consistent at, at uh, scoring more touchdowns and interceptions. So we right. can go on all day with sports analogies, <laughs> but you get better. You refine those skills in sports by doing it over and over and over. Mm -hmm. And you develop consistency. You get better and better because you develop that consistency. It's the mm -hmm. same thing in radio. It yeah. really, in fact, it's the same thing you could say in a lot of different perspectives. Yeah, perspectives. yeah. So... Given that you have worked with many of students that came through KNTU, what typically are some companies or what typically uh, career paths do they, or jobs do they typically go to or companies that you're familiar with? Like, oh, okay, we usually work with this or this student typically go to this company. Are you aware of some off the top of your head? Well, I mentioned, so obviously, there's the, the most obvious one, which would be a student that works here, wants to go work at a radio station. Yeah. Um, and working at a radio station, they might be in marketing or promotions. Yeah. Um, they might be in sales. And yeah. that is a little bit different. Yeah. Um, they might be somebody who handles uh, traffic. And if I said traffic, do you think I'm yeah. referring to like cars and traffic reports? Actually, yeah. traffic <laughs> at a radio station is the person that schedules the commercial law. Yeah. So that's yeah. another department. Mm -hmm. um, another uh, job opportunity, by the way, those jobs could lead to other jobs outside of the business. So I know people have gone into radio sales and then they went and sold billboards and then then they went and sold something that had nothing to do with radio. They, they sold something else, but they became a good salesperson. Mm. So you learn the skill of selling. And, and that I will tell you in a lot of businesses, that's where the money is. Mm. You know, uh, uh, mm. take some okay. marketing classes learn about that learn about brands learn about uh uh the art of doing a good promotion uh mm. regardless of what brand you're promoting whether it's a radio station or it's a brand of soap right. uh, there are certain things you do to promote a brand yeah. and yeah. um and you will learn that uh that that's a skill and that's knowledge that you can take with you to a lot of different industries um mm. You know, there are people I know that have gone into radio, maybe it's been on the news side, and they've gone into work in public affairs. Mm -hmm. Public mm -hmm. affairs is very different from, yeah. you know, that could, you could be in the public affairs department at a, at a corporation that has nothing to do with media. Yeah. Uh, but it's still, yeah. a, it's a skill set. And by yeah. the way, that's one of our staff director positions here as a public affairs director. I thought I'd mm -hmm. mention that. Uh, okay. So, yeah, and that's why I always tell students whenever I meet with them, is like, you are developing fun foundational skills that can translate over into a myriad of career opportunities. You know, yep. we can go into journalism, but you got skill sets that can go into HR, that can go into public relations, that can go into sales, like you said. 
So just keeping your options open. I, I went to this, uh, they had a professional communication uh, a program today, Mayborn Journalism. And uh, this girl, she said, she was like, uh, I, I went to, well, attending class did not lead me to uh, the job. It was going to a club that led me to a job. So keeping your options open, you know, and and taking taking advantage of your interests and just exposing yourself to different things and refining those skills would uh, will help prepare you, you know, for the next step. So yeah. that 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 is so cool. Uh, I know you have. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say there was one other thing we didn't touch on that are opportunities that are available here at K and Q. And it's uh, internships and practicum. Mm -hmm. uh, practicum is for, generally speaking, most of the students that take practicum, say through the media arts department, um, there is a path to doing that. And it starts with meeting with your advisor uh, at the department. Now, we've had students, for example, at the College of Music take practicum at KNTU. So it isn't limited to just media arts. But so, for example, if you're at... Uh, Mayborn, if you're a journalism student, um, instead of practicum, you could enroll in an internship. Mm -hmm. So you would uh, take it as a class. You would be required to show up X number of hours a week, and that number is determined by the department. So for example, uh, just as an example in media arts, 50 hours over a semester is equivalent to one credit hour. So if a student signed up for three credit hours for practicum, uh, that would be 150 hours over 16 weeks. You better show up. <laughs> you better show up or you might not pass that class. Um, so that's a great way. And as you probably know, uh, internships can be done not only at Canes U, but they can be done at a variety of different uh, businesses throughout the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And they're a great way for uh, a student to go out and meet people and learn how to do the job, just like we were talking before. You get that. Uh, you, you start getting plugged in, and yeah, next thing you know, you got a job waiting for you. Right, right. right. Relationships. Yeah. Now, you, I know that you have a success story. You got to give me a student success story that you have experienced at KNTU. Okay. Well, we have um, we have a student who I will re keep his name out of it, but mm -hmm. he works here in news. And uh, we had somebody reach out from uh, uh, WBAP radio here about uh, two months ago saying, hey, do you know of any students there that uh, might be good at doing news here? And uh, the long, uh, we'll take a long story and make it short. They hired him here just about a week ago. So he's going to, uh, he's a junior and he'll be working part time at, in Dallas at this radio uh -huh. station which is one of the legendary news stations, probably one of the, uh, if you were to look at stations in terms of notoriety, it's it's up there across the U.S. You know, um, got a good uh, reputation, good image, and that I'm sur sure will serve him well. I'll bring up another example. Yeah. Um, I, I haven't mentioned this yet, but how one of the ways I found UNT or UNT found me was... Um, I, uh, in 2008, I bought into uh, a small company in Wichita Falls uh, and bought a radio station with three other guys. And uh, that has grown into uh, a, a bigger entity now with there's 15 different owners. Uh, I'm still one of them, even though I don't operate it day to day. I'm one of the owners of this company. And we have two radio stations and a couple of radio towers that we own and operate. Um, and uh, while I was looking for someone in sales, there was a sales institute taking place here at UNT. And this was back in 2007 or eight. And uh, we hired a girl that came through here and was part of that sales institute. And while I was here, I met one of the department chairs, which at that time was the radio TV film department. And uh, he asked me to come on this board, which they called the executive board at UNT for which is now media arts. But at that time, it was for this department to help in an advisory role. And one of the things that we did is part of this. We have a, 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 an event in the spring. We still do it now. It's called the Kickstarter. It's where people come and meet with yeah. people who do all sorts of things in radio, TV, film. 
Uh, and uh, one of the other aspects that I was involved in was mentoring students. So in 2011, uh, I mentored a student who uh, was here uh, working in marketing. And um, uh, as part of that mentorship, I helped him learn about the, you know, the, the process of selling. He just he, he had an interest in doing sales. And after that was done, it was about two, three months later, this uh, company hired him and offered him a full-time job right out of UNT. So I, I'll call that another success story. Oh, is, yeah. uh, and that was That's before big, I even got here. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big success story. So yep. what makes a student stand out? Like, even if they're in there, what makes a student stand out? Like Stand out in my perception in yeah. terms of you're, you're talking perception. about working yeah. at k and Yeah, working well, here, here, are, here are things that I'll recommend that any student do in any capacity, mm -hmm. but is uh, try to come out of your shell. Mm -hmm. Try to um, extend that hand out. You know, we also, a lot of times we used to say, you know, go shake someone's hand. Yeah. And uh, I guess with COVID now, we've, we've gotten a little <laughs> bit away from shaking hands. But go out and meet people. Uh, introduce yourself, walk up and say, hi, I'm so-and-so. I'm a student at, I, I will tell you, there was a guy who um, is a very well-known consultant across the United States. In fact, he the, developed the, the classic rock format back in the 80s. And uh, I met him when I was a student at college. And uh, I asked him, could you give me a tour at your radio station? And I did, and we stayed in touch. Well, next thing I know, he was responsible for me getting hired uh, one of my first programming jobs where I was a program director. And uh, later he was someone that recommended me for a program director job in Houston. So, and that was back in the nineties. Mm -hmm. So that was all about me walking up to this guy when I was a student in college and introducing myself. Mm -hmm. That's how it started, <laughs> you know? And that's sometimes, you know, you think, oh, I don't want to go and say anything because I'm afraid how I'll come across. Don't do that. You no, know, come out of your shell, come out, say, introduce yourself, say, hey, I have a question. I want to know, ask them a question about the business. Hey, how do you do this? Um, you know, one thing you, you'll learn when you start searching for a job is when you start a discussion with someone and you find that they get to learn about you and you're asking good questions, that's a great way to start opening doors. It's part of that networking. So Man. that's a skill set. You were asking yeah. about skills that help, what students <laughs> that stand out, those that yeah. do that, um, yeah. I think set themselves apart. Um, I think another, you know, obviously there's other skills such as good writing skills, I think are very yeah. important. That'll serve you well in just about yeah. anything. Yeah. Um, let's see, what else? What else? Uh, being a good communicator. Yeah. You know, yeah. how you speak, how you um, explain things, how you ask questions. Yeah. And showing up. <laughs> showing, showing up, up on time. <laughs> showing up on time. How about that for a skill set? <laughs> you know, somebody once said half the battle for any job is just showing up. Just showing up. <laughs> showing up on you know, time. Yes. A cold fall morning when it's uh, 40 degrees and rainy and you don't want to get out of bed. But sometimes yes. you need to and you got to show up. Yes, yes. And that's something that you can control. You can. You know That's something yeah. you can control. So, yeah. man, this has been very enlightening, man. I'm super excited to have this conversation with you. Uh, and Julia, if you have any questions, please, you know, unmute and share if you have any questions that you want to ask. But, um, you know, my final question, what, how, what should we expect from KNTU? in this spring, next year, what should we expect? As far as job opportunities, things- Job opportunities, uh, expansion, uh, whatever you want to share, what should we expect? What is the most important thing you want us to know or what should we expect? Well, one thing I would tell you is that uh, k and will continue to be a place for students to come and learn about not only radio, but but a place where they can come and work either as a volunteer or for pay or for practicum internship. Uh, but there's a lot of opportunities where they can come and uh, and uh, if they want to be on the air, they can. If you don't want to be on the air, if you want to do something behind the scenes 
and, uh, um, and, and, and learn something new come and try it for a semester. Um, that's one other thing I didn't mention, Eric, I wanna mention real quick is yeah, I would yeah, recommend yeah. students, don't put too much, one, one thing I notice some students do is they put too much on their plate. Don't mm -hmm. overload yourself and try to do five or six different activities in one semester. Um, we have students that will work at NTTV across the hall um, one semester, and then they'll come over here and they'll work for us another semester. And then they might go and do something else with the NT daily another semester. There's, there's a lot of opportunity here for students at UNT. Uh, just don't bite off more than you can chew. Be realistic. Remember the number one reason here is classes. Pass those classes, do well, um, and allow enough time for you to be able to do everything on your plate well. Yeah. I love that. We can end off on that. No, let's end off on this. You said you was a DJ. What was your favorite song to spin whenever you was DJing? I think you was DJing was in college. college. Yeah, I was favorite a DJ song. in college. Oh, boy. I, like, I, I gotta it's hard to pick just one. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to guess your age. You're, You're trying to guess my age? Uh, so you, look, you look 24. So if I was young. taking uh, America the Beautiful, how Ooh. old would that make me? <laughs> I got you on that one, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> you thought I was going to come back and say Ariana Grande or, right. or Dua Lipa, right? <laughs> now that would really throw you. I love it. I love there it. There you go. But so it's hard to, it's, you know, a lot of times it's funny. People ask a favorite movie, a favorite song, and or yeah. favorite album. You ever get that too? What's your yeah. favorite album of all time? Yeah. I go, boy, when you say from all time. From all time. <laughs> just pick a decade. That's yeah. <laughs> right. There's just right. too many to choose. From. So many. It's What's so your favorite many. food? I don't know. I don't know. I eat. <laughs> I eat. Yeah. Yo. Whatever no, tastes good. I, yeah, right. And then you always exposed to different things. So, I mean... It's always something new coming out that's just impacting mm -hmm. the culture and impacting your stomach. Or, yeah. You know, so, but nah, so, thank you, Miss. Go ahead. No, no questions from, yeah. I, I know you have one student here that's in, the, if she doesn't want to come on camera, does she want to come on mic and ask any questions or do we need to wrap up? It sounds like you need to wrap up. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Dan. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Julia, for coming out and just listening. Uh, we said, really no appreciate you. Thank you. Okay. We really appreciate you just showing up. I hope you was able to get something from this. Uh, this definitely will be uh, on our website so other people can have or other students can have access to this. And thank you for the wonderful insight, Mr. Dan.